Today's topic is called Do Nothing Without Counsel. Do Nothing Without Counsel. Um, we always tell brothers and sisters to always, 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 um, when there's an issue or a problem, to seek counsel. We always provide you the complaint forms and so forth when there's an issue you may have throughout your throughout different states because, again, um, Israel will always have issues. There will always be drama amongst our people because we're a nation of people. We're a nation, and within a nation of people, there's going to be drama. There's going to be drama. There's going to be issues, and so it's important that we understand that in order to avoid drama, in order to avoid issues, it's important to take counsel and to follow Counsel. Um, we're going to open up with uh, Proverbs 11, verse 14. The book of Proverbs, chapter 11, and verse 14. Where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. So where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. So when there is no counsel, um, the people will fall. We're going to read an example of that later on regarding when the Most High removes counselors from my people, what became of us. So it says when there's no counselor, it says the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Meaning this, meaning that when you have a certain plan to do something, oftentimes that plan is not of the Lord. Sometimes that plan is of your own imagination. It's of your own bl emotion. And it's not wise. It's a an, an non-biblical um, thought. Um, and oftentimes we tend to make these decisions all out of impulse, out of emotions, and it tends to be, it depends on bias in the end. It tends to bite us in the end. And so we always tell you to seek counsel. Um, it's very important that um, as a people, we learn to seek counsel and learn to follow instructions. Because when you don't follow instructions, you're going you're to find yourself in troublous, troublous situations. Get 12, verse 15. The book of Proverbs, chapter 12 and verse 15. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. But he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. So you'll find Solomon saying over and over and over again, listen to counsel, listen to counsel. Read again. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. But oftentimes, in our, in our own eyes, we feel what, what we're doing is right. It's the right thing to do. When it usually is not the right thing to do. Especially the non-biblical thing to do. Go ahead. But he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. He that listens to counsel is wise. Wise. Get 20 in verse 5. The book of Proverbs, chapter 20 in verse 5. Mm -hmm. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. Read again. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water. I mean, there's a whole lot of thoughts in there. It's filled with all kinds of things, all kinds of dreams, ambitions, um, hopes that really don't make any sense in terms of being biblically sound. And so the Lord says that a wise man will draw those things out. He'll get rid of that stuff. He'll put that to the side and follow the scriptures, follow the word of God, the laws. That's what a man of God will do. Read it again. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. But a man of understanding will draw that water out. He'll get rid of it. He'll, put it, he'll flood it out. He'll drain it. He will drain it out. Get Tobit 4 verse 18. The book of Tobit, chapter 4 and verse 18. Ask counsel of all that are wise, and despise not any counsel that is profitable. Read again. Ask counsel of all that are wise. Ask counsel of all that are wise. Go ahead. Ask counsel of all that are wise, 
and despise not any counsel that is profitable. And despise not any counsel that is profitable. That is profitable. And many of you do that, you brothers and sisters, especially when it comes to marital advice. Y'all push it to the side. You pull it to the side. We have countless, countless classes on it over and over and over again. And everybody seems to do whatever the hell it is they want to do. And then they want us to come behind you and pick up the pieces. And I'm not doing that. We're not doing that up here. We're not doing it. This is why I'm continuing from what I said last week. I think I was there last week. We mentioned about brothers falling out and leaving and deserting. I'm going to dutch into that tonight because that needs to be readdressed, firmly readdressed. Because, again, we're not going to set the trend of brothers or sisters that take it upon themselves to get involved in a relationship unadvised without counsel. And then something comes of it, whether it be a child or whatever, and you want us to come behind you and fix the pieces. We're not doing it. It's not happening because what it does is it sets the precedent for other brothers and sisters to do the exact same thing. Oh, you took care of so-and-so. Why you can't help me out? No, we're not doing that. We're not going to open up that floodgate for that at all. So that's going to be very minimal help regarding that situation. Um, read verse 18 again, Tobit again. Tobit 4 and 18. Ask counsel of all that are wise, and despise not any counsel that is profitable. Next verse. Bless the Lord thy God always, and desire of him that thy ways may be directed. Desire of him that thy ways may be directed the right way. Go ahead. And, and that all thy paths and counsels may prosper. Uh-huh. For every nation hath not counsel, but the Lord himself giveth all good things, and he humbleth whom he will as he will. Now therefore, my son, remember my commandments, neither let them be put out of thy mind. So the commandments, Tobit Sr. taught Tobit Jr. was to keep the commandments, and through those commandments, you receive counsel, and through those who keep the commandments, you receive counsel from them. Not from your own mind, from counsel from them. You're going to find throughout the scriptures that our forefathers, as wise as they were, always had men beside them giving them counsel. Always. Get Sirach 2. No, matter of fact, give me Proverbs 5. 12 and verse 13. 11. Verse, Proverbs chapter 5, verse 11. This is Solomon speaking about the mischiefs of whoredom. Meaning, he was, remember, he was involved in heathen women. So he's giving advice here in Proverbs 5 about to avoid it, not to get involved in the same thing that he got involved in when he, fell up, when he got old and fell into heathen women. That was his advice. Read that, verse 11. The book of Proverbs, chapter 5 and verse 11. And thou mourn at the last. No, no, read verse, uh, verse 1. Stop in verse 1. I like this verse. The book of Proverbs, chapter 5 and verse 1. Mm-hmm. My son, attend unto my wisdom, and bow thine ear to my understanding. Uh-huh. That thou mayest regard discretion, and that thy lips may keep knowledge. Yeah. For the lips of a strange woman drop, it, drop as a honeycomb. The lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb. Go ahead. And her mouth is smoother than oil. Her mouth is stu- smoother than oil. She speaks the right things, says the right things, because presents herself in the best way possible to make you believe that she's a righteous sister. Now, strange here is going into both wicked and the heathen alike. All right? In this particular context, it's going into heathen, but it's also going into, when you read verse se- chapter 7, it's the same thing about a whorish woman or a harlot. Same thing. Same smooth words. It's the same thing. So a heathenish woman or, or a heathenish woman or a heathenish behaving woman, whorish, it's the same thing. You understand? Same context. Read on. Proverbs 5 and 4. But her end is as wormwood. His is, is, end is bitter as wormwood. But her end is bitter as wormwood. I mean, you, I mean, it, that, that, you slowly get rotted out. She destroy you. Go ahead. Sharp as a two-edged sword. Can't even get you killed or hurt you. Go ahead. Her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. And let me give you an example. Read verse 4 again. But her end is bitter as wormwood. He rots out from the inside out. Go ahead. Sharp as a two-edged sword. We've seen brothers in here go out of their wits. For sisters. And we've told them, leave that sister alone. And a brother goes all his way for the sister. And he, he's, uh, he's real big at first. You know what I'm talking about, the Yasop. Big brother, different state. And he was a pretty husky, like, well, I'm almost my height, but stocky. Got involved with this sister. Cut his hair off real low. 
look like Skeletor. Scared of, look, look sickly. Look real sickly. Not thin like, you know, like I am thin. But thin like, no, you got cancer, thin. Something wrong with you. Not mocking it, but look like this really malnourished, bad. Like he was sucking his soul out of him. That's how he looked. That's how he looked. looked real bad. Because a brother won against the counsel he was given. He said, leave the sister alone. Yeah, but she's pretty, bro. Listen, leave her alone. We know she's pretty, but she has demons on her. We've seen them. It's evident. There's no good works from the sister. She's about self. She's always in the mirror, always taking pictures of herself all the time. Leave her alone. He was like, nah. Guy involved the sister, left with the sister, and now he looks like, looks like he done lost his freaking mind and weight. Craziness. Another brother again. He was heavy. Heavy, heavy set brother. Another one. Got involved the sister again. He was kind of chunky. Got involved the sister. They start fist fighting in the house. Start fist fighting whatever. He's laying while they're on her menstrual because she's, uh, she's off and on, so he didn't care. He just stopped caring. The found, he's just defiling himself and her at the same time. Brother lost weight. Sunk, he looked all sickly as well. We've seen it countless times. Brothers come up in here. They do things unadvisedly. They, they, they move too fast. And before you know, you're a crack. Deacon Asap always says all the time, you are a crash test dummy. Y'all come up in here and think we're stupid and don't know what we're talking about. And then you become the very product of what we're talking about now. Many of you in this room right here, the men that I'm talking about were sitting right in this room with you at the same time, doing the exact same thing, nodding their head, yeah, 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 con, 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 con. <laughs> Meanwhile, I listen to a word we're saying. We can duck a damn toothpick later on. Jump down to your verse 4 again. Yeah, verse 4. Proverbs 5 and verse 4. But her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Yeah. Her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. Right, she can get you killed. Some of you brothers will get involved with a sister who will have children already. Is there anything wrong with that? No, nothing's wrong with that at all. You can be a father to the fatherless. That's cool. That's scriptural. However, some of you brothers don't know anything about the father of those kids. And some of you don't even bother to ask. You so caught up in the, in the box, you don't care about that baby father until he rolls up in that Cadillac and got the AK in the back. And his boy is driving by waiting at you. What's up, nigga? How you doing? Because you thought it was a game. You thought you can just, oh, I love her. You don't know nothing about her background. She can be in the run. She can be a mule for you know. You don't know. I mean, some of you don't know the mule. The mule is a girl that hides drugs for her man whatever. That's the mule. Some of you brothers get involved with that stuff. And expect us to help you. I'm not helping you. I'm not getting myself shot up because you want to mess around with the wrong woman. That's your business. You better get a bulletproof vest quick. You better get, get, them, get those windows tinted as deep as possible, legally can, and get them thick layered lenses windows. That's, that's your business. Be giving you counsel. Learn to follow instructions. But y'all want to do what y'all want to do and end up with a freaking woman that has a baby father. You can't have two lions in one cage. You cannot. It's going to be a battle royale between you two. It's going to be a power struggle. You can't tell a child what to do. You can't tell us, don't touch my kid, man. I'll F you up. So-and-so. Now you got to deal with that now. Or she'll threaten you with the father. If you do so-and-so, I'll tell the father. Now, the father is in jail for life or dead. You're good to go. <laughs> I'm not sure. That sounds mean. But it's true because you have no problems in between. Now, or if you meet the, the brother... Doesn't want, doesn't want to be bothered. He's in the world. He's like, I don't want them kids. He goes about, about his business, and she hasn't seen him for years and years and years. That's not, That's fine, because he's no longer and he's no longer involved in the child's life. That's fine. Whether he's gone the ground in jail for 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 a, for a sentence, life sentence, or he's completely nowhere near in the picture. Understandable. Now, if you have a brother that is in the picture, and some some of y'all some of y'all manage to get blessed, and you, you find yourself on a common ground with the baby father. You know he understands that you're a father now, and they'll step back. Some instances that is the case. That that is very rare, but that are there are some times that that can be, you know, good. That could be a, sometimes that that's that that's that's available. That situation is available, which is fine. But a lot of y'all don't even take the time to even ration that out to figure that out. Okay, let me find out if the father's involved. Let me ask these questions because a lot of y'all don't want the answer. You don't want to know, because if he's there, that, that could be a roadblock for you. So you're like, you know what, let me just not ask. If I don't ask, I didn't know. Ignorance is bliss. 
I don't know. I'm good. I think we're stupid in here. That's what I was going to ask. That's the question I was going to ask. Many of y'all know what the answers will be before you even come to council. Yep. And that's what you say. You, 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 you'll ignore. Look at verse 4 again real quick. Proverbs chapter 5 and verse 4. But her, but her end is bitter as wormwood. This is an admonishment, meaning that if you ignore counsel, you're going to find out what this woman is really about mm -hmm. in the end. You already know that. By you avoiding counsel, you say, I don't want to know what it is. Mm -hmm. That's why this is written this way. You already know that when it says, but her end, meaning that you have to be told by what the scriptures are saying. Because you already figured what the end would be. Because if you did not really know this, what the end would be, you would come up here and get the counsel. You would seek counsel. But the only way you won't really seek counsel is when you already know that this is not right. And then you'll go do it anyway. And then you, like Deacon said, and then you'll expect us to fix it. We're not fixing those kinds of issues. We're not doing that. Okay, you get caught up in the wrong thing and avoid counsel and do things sneakily behind the back of you on your own. Okay, and we have records on how we deal up here, too, because we're not going to forget what we said. Okay, go ahead, Deacon. Now, my Bible has a precept. Give me Ecclesiastes 726. Perfect. Ecclesiastes 726. The Bible's on point. <laughs> Annotations is on point in this one. Ecclesiastes 726. Oh, that was a pre-printed. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> that means the <laughs> the person put the precepts in there. He know he been yeah. through it. <laughs> Let me put that there. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter seven, verse twenty six. And I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets. Because you, you brothers, you fought for that. You fought for the game. Because some sisters have game, and they they know how to play. How to play it real smooth. Smile. It all smiles. It's soft. Soft spoken. And some of you brothers are in the midst of, I don't have to use that word. Well, matter of fact, you know what? Hold those two real quick. What makes her worse than death to a brother? Because she's beautiful as hell. She put it on you. She made you, she made you happy during all the times and all that, but she's worse than death. So the reason, the reason why uh, when it says she's more bitter than death is because you can't part from that. You're so hooked into it, and you, you're going to go through hell trying to keep it. Give 1 Samuel 25, 39. We oftentimes use the word courting. I don't like that word because it's a worldly word. I don't like to use it. I prefer to use biblical terms, and we have, I, well, we have found mm -hmm. a biblical term regarding a brother and a sister speaking together or speaking to, to each other. Now, some of y'all know the history about David and the ball. The ball was a wicked Killmonger in the scriptures. <laughs> that dude was neat. If you, you know, if you start a movie, you don't understand the reference. But um, uh, Nabal was a wicked dude, and his wife was a righteous sister. And the Lord saw that and said, okay, I'm going to take this dude out. And he told, of course, he took the dude out. And once David got word that he was, he was gone, and she was pretty as well as wise. And oftentimes, you oftentimes wonder, why does it say she was wise? How do you know she was wise? How do you know? We're going to read it here. 25, 39. Read that. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 25 and verse 39. Matter of fact, hold on. Let me just get that real fast well, about her being wise. Give me one second. We mentioned her being beautiful and wise. Verse 3. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 25 and verse 3. Uh-huh. Now the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife, Abigail. Uh-huh. And she was a woman of good understanding. She's just saying, a woman of good understanding. Go ahead. And of a beautiful countenance. And she was very beautiful. Go ahead. But the man was churlish and evil in his doings. And he was of the house of Caleb. Now, the guy that wrote this is obviously a hater of Judah. You had to put that there. But this guy was Judah. This guy was Judah. All right? The Bible was Judah. So now let's go jump down to the, um, to the verse I was at before. About Ver communion. The book of uh, 1 Samuel, chapter 25, verse 39. 39. And when David heard that Nabal was dead. That dude dead? Because David was going to kill him. David was going to kill that dude. He was running his mouth, being disrespectful. And David was going to kill him and everyone in the house because the guy was grimy. So once he got word that Nabal was dead, go ahead. He said, blessed be the Lord that hath pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal. Uh -huh. And hath kept his servant from evil. From Saul killing him. Go ahead. For the Lord hath returned the wickedness of Nabal upon his own head. And David sent and, and communed with Abigail. David sent and what? 
and communed with Abigail. David sent mess letters, messengers, and communed with Abigail. Go ahead. To take her to him to wife. Yeah, he did. He communed with her to take her as a wife. What's commune mean? What's the word? Communicate. Commune, communicate. It's the same thing. They spoke first. Then he realized not only is she a beautiful sister, she's wise. Instead of acting verse 3, I say, you know, she was wise. Because David said she was wise back in verse 3. You understand? So the term is not, I'm like, I'm like quoting, is communing. Now, David was not going up there, banging on her house, and then leaving and going somewhere else. That's not what David was doing. David was speaking with her, so he sent me messages to her. Sent messages, okay, there's a letter from David, here you go. She's reading it, and they're talking back and forth. Because he was on the run. That's what's going on at this time. You understand? That's what's happening. So they were communing. These two were communing. He saw, okay, she's worthy of being a wife. To make sure she's not like her husband was. Nabal, who was the devil. So he communed with her. You brothers in here don't commune. Y'all just see Facebook or YouTube and go, wow, she's pretty. She's holding a sandwich. That's mine right there. You retarded. Something wrong with you. You're slow. You're a slow belly, the Bible call you. I'm tired of it. It's annoying. It's every, every class, every other Shalom. year is the same thing. This is Bishop you know. Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.